All right, another day, another movie collection update. Like many of you, I spent way too much money on Severn sales, um, Kino sales, um, most recently the Vinegar Syndrome sale. Usually I'll buy single editions. I don't usually buy box sets from Severn. I don't know why that is, but recently I purchased the standard edition of the Forgotten Gialli Volume 1, and I said I'm definitely going to get more of those Vinegar Syndrome box sets this year. And that's what I did. I settled on four. I set my limit around $200. And I ended up with four box sets from Vinegar Syndrome this year. I'm going to start off with the one that I've been watching this week, which is Homegrown Horrors, Volume 1. Gorgeous box. I love the way their box sets are. All the films inside. So Homegrown Horror, Homegrown Horrors Volume 1 is some um, 80s and 90s regional filmmaking, very low budget, high on love of film, really short on money. And I've only watched one of these. Last night I watched Winter Beast. This is from 1992, set in a mountaintop uh, village. There's a ski lodge there. Um, a ranger is trying to shut down the mountain because there's been some disappearances. And in a very Jaws-esque way, the hotel manager says, no way. But there's a Native American um, spirit or demon loose on the mountain, as you see there. Oh, let's see. Weird things are happening in and around the Wild Goose Lodge. A snowy inn located in rural Massachusetts. People are being found dead and mutilated while others are vanishing without a trace. Realizing from the violence, realizing the violence might have something to do with a Native American black magic and the ancient secrets of the area's historic totem poles. A trio of cops decide to investigate the goings-ons and are faced with a faced with an angry array of monsters, ghouls, and even a sampling of murderous locals. This was a lot of fun. Low budget, shot on film, plenty of grain. It looks fantastic, though. I don't know. Vinegar Syndrome, Syndrome's restoration teams are amazing. The clarity and depth of the image, it's beautiful. This comes with a reverse cover. Also a creature featured in the film. This reminded me a lot of Equinox, um, low budget mountain adventure, um, very cool stop motion animation in here. Extras on this include a brand new commentary with the producer Mark Fazell, archival commentary track with the director Christopher Thighs, producer Mark Frizzell, and cinematographer Craig Matheson. It came from Lone Peak, an unfinished early work print version of Winter Beast. Sweat and Persistence, a new interview with producer Mark Frizzell. I Saw It in a Dream, a new interview with actor Charles Maka. My First Career, a new interview with actor David Maka. So Bad It's Good, a new interview with actress Dory Mae Kelly. He wears sunglasses at night. A new interview with actor Mike Margie, a movie for filmmakers, and a new interview with filmmaker Simon Barrett. Oh dear, what can the matter be? An archival making of documentary, archival deleted scenes, archival audio interview with composer Michael Perliston, an archival snap opera footage. Um, probably the last of them I'll be reading. The lighting in here is not that great on my end. And uh, I think I need a new prescription as well. But I had a fun time watching this. If you're a fan of stuff like Equinox, um, low-budget horror adventure with some cool stop-motion, definitely check it out. Also on this set is Final Exam. This one's from 1988. I've got this one in my disc player right now. I'm watching it next. But that's the reversible art on that one. 
A group of college students have been given an unusual assignment, spend the night inside a supposedly haunted house as part of their studies into the supernatural and occult. Although the rag team of collegiates would much rather party and get stoned than look for ghosts, it's not long before unexplained events begin to occur, initially suspecting that some of their classmates might be playing a practical joke. These fears are proven very real when someone or something dressed in robes and carrying a scythe starts bumping them off one by one. Love the setup. I love the assignment that keeps you in a location overnight. I'm thinking of something like The Haunting. Um, extras on here include a group commentary track. It's newly scanned and restored in 2K from the 16 millimeter negative. Fatal Examination, a brand new extended making of documentary. Reversible artwork, English subtitles. Fatal Exam. And the last film on this set, Beyond the Door, from maybe 1988. Like I said, the fine print too small. I am getting old, guys. Sorry. But uh, Beyond the Doors. Lately, Ben hasn't been sleeping well. His dreams are filled with violent and terrifying visions of monsters and death. Seeking out answers, he begins to pursue the subtext and hidden meanings of his strange and terrifying nightmares with help of his professor and several friends. As the dreams grow increasingly lifelike, Ben fears that he's losing his grip on sanity, especially as those around him start turning up dead, horribly mutilated, just like he's seen in his sleep. There you go. And this does have reversible artwork as well. All right, well, there you go. That's Homegrown Horrors Volume 1. One of four box sets I purchased during the Vinegar Syndrome Halfway to Black Friday sale. Up next, we have Televised Terror. I am a sucker for horror films or TV terror films, movies that were made for TV. Oh. Mostly in the 70s, because that's when I was coming of age. That's when I was seeing stuff like um, Gargoyles, which, please, somebody put Gargoyles on Blu-ray Restored. Make it happen on Volume 2, Vincent. But uh, this is Televised Terror, Volume 1. In the 80s, one of the most affecting films I saw was a horror film on TV called Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. Scared Scares me to this day. Televised Terror. Three movies inside. So these were TV movies that aired in the 80s and 90s, I believe. I've watched all of these. I'm just old and I can't remember. But from 1990, this is the first one I watched. This is Child in the Night. Not reversible artwork. It just has kind of like a sign-off TV station on there. I'm not a fan of that. I would have rather had reversible artwork. And to be honest, I'm not that big of a fan of the artwork style they made for this box set. But I love having TV films on Blu-ray. The Kino Lorber has two of my favorite, Night of the Stalker and Night of the Strangler, the Kolchak films. They look excellent. But A Child of the Night from 1990. This one starring Season Hubley, Darren McGavin from Christmas Story and Kolchak. Um has a soundtrack by Mark Snow of the X-Files theme fame and also features a very young oh why can't I remember his name because I'm old I told you folks oh Tom Skerritt's in here as well and Elijah Wood Tom Skerritt um, of alien fame um, Elijah Wood of course you know from the Lord of the Rings trilogy but this is about a kid whose father is murdered he witnesses it, but he goes into shock. Um, Susan Hubley is a um, child therapist, psychologist, who's brought in to help the police on the case. And uh, the killer is kind of cool. It kind of reminded me of um, what we saw later with I Know What You Did Last Summer, wearing a, um, a sailor's yellow rain slicker with a hook as a weapon. Pretty cool. Are you in the house alone? This I previously, I think I had on a double feature DVD from Scream Factory. This is from 1978, and it looks way better than anything you've seen it on DVD before. 
images perfectly clear film grain that's what i love about the older movies that were all shot on film so they look great when they restore them in hd um, this one starring kathleen beller blythe danner tony bill robin mattinson trisha o'neill and dennis quaid this is a movie about a young girl who's being stalked she's getting threatening phone calls eventually she's raped by this stranger um, who turns out not to be such a stranger and how that's handled dennis quaid plays quite a shit in this one i've never seen dennis quaid play scum as well as he played it here he's really young he looks like he's in his teens maybe early 20s but a terrific performance kind of has like a more adult after school special vibe to it with the rape happening um very good solidly acted up next the calendar girl murders from i think this is 1994 this is my favorite of the covers but i'm, I'm not really a huge fan of that art style i love that blue color kind of reminds me of the, the hack o lantern artwork but in the calendar girl murders there's a it's like a playboy bunnies are being knocked off they call the cops to protect them but uh, somehow they're getting into these parties and photo shoots and murdering beautiful young women um, this one has tom scarrett again um, and we also have sharon stone as well a very young sharon stone very attractive uh, she's still a very attractive woman but uh, this is a fun set. If you're into TV movies, definitely check out the televised terror set. The transfers on these look amazing. Um, and Warner Archive does like uh, the Bermuda Triangle. Um, it just amazes me how fantastic these shot on film TV movies look when they've been restored. And Vinegar Syndrome do a great job with the extras. Now, like I said, I started buying the Vinegar Syndrome box sets because I had purchased the, stan the standard issue uh, version of uh, Forgotten Gialli Volume 1. It just comes in the keep case with the three discs inside. It doesn't have the box set, but uh, I made sure to correct that because I picked up Forgotten Gialli Volume 2 and 3. So Volume 2, um, I haven't watched any of these yet. Again, gorgeous artwork. Beautiful spines. Three movies inside. I don't think I've seen any of these. I haven't watched them, obviously. 1972 Murder Mansion. On a dark and foggy night in the countryside, a group of apparent strangers all find themselves stranded at an old Gothic mansion. Deciding to spend the night and look for help the following morning, the group pair off for bed. As the night wears on, increasingly strange events begin to occur, culminating in a murder. Tensions and suspicions rise, and fear mounts that the ghost and the mansion have risen from the grave, especially when more bodies turn up. But is the explanation behind these ghastly events truly supernatural? Not the most original setup. That could be any number of whodunits from the 70s. Uh, but we get a newly scan 4K scan of the film from the 35mm negative. Includes Spanish language soundtrack with new English translation. Lady of the Mansion, an interview with actress Ida Jolly, a.k.a. Evelyn Stewart. Reversible cover art, newly translated English subtitles. So we do have reversible art here. I love the artwork on the box. I love the artwork on the discs, on the wraps. Up next is Armando Crispin's Autopsy. I've heard good things about this one. I haven't seen it myself. A wave of sudden violent suicides have gripped Rome and are being blamed on sunspots. Simon, a young pathologist with an unhealthy obsession with death, has become increasingly interested in the strange phenomenon. But with the discovery of the body of a young woman, an apparent victim of a self-inflicted gunshot, Simona finds herself thrust into a terrifying mystery and conspiracy to cloak actual murders as suicides. And the nearer she comes to unraveling the truth, the more in danger she is 
to entering the sights of a deranged killer who might be a lot closer to home than she realizes. Autopsy, this one from 1975. Prime time for giallos. Extras on this include newly scanned 2K, new 2K scan from the original negative, both English and Italian language, archival theatrical introduction with the director, editing and rhythm and interview with editor Danielle Alabin, the autopsy papers and interview with Francisco Crispum. Okay, getting old, kind of tired and drunk. Can't read that one. But the reversible art on this one, I like that. That is, I would love to have a t-shirt with that on it. And Crazy Desires, uh, Desires of a Murderer. This one from 1977. The Countess Liana has just returned from her family's grand old castle, where her paralyzed father and apparent clairvoyant and strange bro younger brother with an unhealthy interest in taxidermy resides. Almost immediately after arriving, one of Liliana's friends who is visiting the castle is shockingly murdered and has her eyes plucked out of their sockets. While suspicion falls on Liana's brother, a curious police inspector, Sicilian character actor Corrado Gaipa of The Godfather and My Dear Killer begins to investigate, believing that there to be more to the killing than meets the eye. However, his sleuthing proves no match for this maniac as the body count steadily rises. That's pretty exciting. Those all sound actually quite good. So there you have it. That's Forgotten Gialli, oops, volume three, not two. That's why I shouldn't do this when I'm drinking. <laughs> and the last of my purchases from the Vincent sale, Forgotten Gialli, volume two. Again, gorgeous artwork. Three movies inside. Begin with My Dear Killer. This is one I know I saw. I had the Shriek Show DVD uh, for years. I think I still have it up on the shelf. Um, I don't remember anything about it. Doesn't mean it wasn't good. I was watching so many Gialli at one time, nonstop, that uh, they all started running together for me, to be honest. I loved Gialli, Black Glove Killers. Um, stylish cinematography, the 70 fashions, I love it all, but they do kind of run together if you're going to watch them all at once. Uh, so for this one, after a man is decapitated by an excavator at a rural construction site, Inspector Luca Peretti is assigned to the, to the case, but what initially seems to be an isolated killing soon paves the way for an ever-growing number of vicious murders. As Peretti tries desperately to unmask the killer, he discovers that all the victims were in some way connected to another shocking crime, the horrific murder of a young girl, which has remained unsolved for several years. you think I would remember that, a shocking decapitation by excavator, but I do not. Reversible artwork on this one as well. And then these two are movies that I had on my to-buy list for a long time. I think they were both put out by Mondo Macabro on DVD. Um, even at the used shops, they were really expensive by the time I was looking for them. So I have not seen them. But first up, The Girl in Room 2A. After being released from prison, a young woman named Margaret goes to stay at a halfway house for female ex-cons, run by a kindly... Mrs. Gant, it's nothing, not long before Margaret begins experiencing strange happenings in the old house, such as a recurring red stain on the floor, and worse, she begins to be plagued by visions of a young woman being tortured and murdered in a mysterious figure in Red Hood. But things take an even more unsettling turn when she befriends Charlie, who is searching for his sister who has disappeared after staying in Miss Grant's house. So the room... Girl in Room 2A, 1974. Extras on this include a newly two, a new 2K scan from the 
negative. Both the English and Italian language dubbed soundtracks. Archival interview with actress Daniela Rodano. Audio essay by film historian and critic Rachel Nisbet. Original trailer sourced from tape, still gallery, reversible cover art, newly translated English subtitles. Ooh, I do like that artwork. And the last film in the set is Ferdinando Marigue's The French Sex Murders from 1972. Following the brutal death of a prostitute and an executive Parisian brothel, grizzled Inspector Fontaine is brought in to investigate. After implicating Antoine, a petty thief, and a regular client of the murdered woman, Fontaine believes the case to be closed. However, Antoine makes a daring attempt to escape custody only to be decapitated in the process, after which his eyes are given over to strange professor Valdemar to study, but soon enough, those affiliated with implicating him begin to meet their own violent deaths. As Antoine's vengeful spirit return to kill those he believes responsible for his own gruesome fate, or has another more sinister character been behind the diabolical murders from the very beginning? Again, we get a 35 millimeter uh, negative scan in 2K, English and Italian language options, historical commentary track, with film historians Kat Ellinger and Sam Dane, The Wild Wild World of Dick Randell, a featurette on the career of producer Dick Randell, promotional still gallery, reversible artwork, and newly translated English subtitles. With reversible artwork. This sounds like a fun set. Two decapitations in one set. All right, well, thanks for listening to me drunkenly ramble about the money that I have spent on movies. Tune in next time for a Scream Factory collection update.